Hi, I'm Eric Johnson here at Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management, and I'm here with Anu Iyengar. Anu is the head of M&A North America for J.P. Morgan, and well, welcome Anu. Great to be here. Well, it's crazy amount of activity going on in M&A right now. I yeah. uh, you know here in Nashville, being a healthcare center, we've been watching an amazing number of hospital uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and M&A activity and uh, everyone's watching the Aetna mm -hmm. uh, CVS mm -hmm. merger um, but it's happening all over the place not just in those areas what's driving all this activity yeah we've had uh, I guess now about uh, three years of really robust M&A activity if you go back and look at 2015 16 and 17 and as we sitting where we are now at the beginning of 2018 we've already had uh, a record January. Mm -hmm. January was the highest M&A activity in 2018 after the last year was 2000. Ah. So uh, it's, it's been really robust. So if you peel back and say, what is driving all this? Fundamentally, it starts with a company's desire for growth. And we are at a unique time in, uh, in the global economy because if you look at all the OECD countries, every one of them is growing. And there hasn't been many moments of time in history when every country has got a mm. positive mm. Uh, growth. And not just that, it's a lot of mm. other countries, emerging market countries are also growing. Now, none of the growth is kind of gangbuster. It's, it's uh, s sometimes a small growth, but it's all growing. Mm. And that's a pretty unique time. And you've had a record bull run in the equity markets. Um, I've lost count of, I think it was like more than 70 times as the S&P 500 hit a high last year. This year it's hit a high. You also had some recent uh, volatility. So companies sit there and look at it and say, uh, I'm pretty happy with my stock price. Growth outlook is pretty good. Not sure where, how it gets any better. What do I do to move my stock price, be a real needle mover in terms of delivering value to my shareholders. And oftentimes that points to driving your strategy through M&A. And that has been the driver, which is really a very good reason, right? It's not a defensive, but more offensive, growth-oriented uh, need for M&A. That has been facilitated then by pretty low interest rates, robust equity markets, so when you think about the currency you use for paying for things, that has been pretty attractive, uh, right? You yeah, have cheap great. debt, <laughs> uh, strong equity, and so the math around an M&A transaction has looked pretty good. And the third element I'd say is the investors. And then when a company has announced an M&A deal, part of what we track and companies track and the market tracks is how have the investors reacted to that? So when people announce a deal and the market reacts positively, people are saying, we like it. We like the fact that you announced a synergistic deal or a strategic deal, and we are rewarding the company for pursuing that strategy and growth through M&A. So this mixture, um, mm. again, has been, a has good, been good. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good mix. A lot of things. Now, everyone's digesting the, the tax change. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that impacting M&A? Um, so, for one, it was, uh, it was a good thing that it didn't kind of hang out there for a longer period of time. Because uncertainty is never good for M&A, right? So if we were, let's say the tax law had not come into place in the end of last year, we would have spent a long time this year trying to figure out, well, how should we value the company? Should it be at a 35% tax rate or 21% tax rate? So having the certainty and clarity is a good thing That's because good. now you know what regime you're valuing the company mm -hmm. under. Secondly, the amount of uh, overseas cash that some of the sectors, technology and uh, pharma in particular, have and the ability to bring that uh, back and actually deploy it and use it wow. uh, is, is, a, is a big boon yeah. for M&A. Now every company will make their own decisions, but since we are in the healthcare city, a lot of the healthcare deals that you saw happen in January were um, facilitated That's by some tax. Fat, wa fat wallets, huh? Yeah, ability to use uh, use cash, and also having the certainty on the cash flows that you are buying, mm -hmm. to say that this is the tax rate that I will pay on um, uh, on these cash flows. So that has helped. 
Um, now, the biggest beneficiaries are companies uh, whose operations are domestic, because it's US income, and who are not over levered because of the limitation mm -hmm. on the interest uh, deductibility. Mm -hmm. So to the extent the companies are over levered or you have a lot of IP where you, you have payments going uh, outside or you have worldwide operations, there may be other, other factors to it, but in general, it's a positive for the M&A market removes a big element of uncertainty and gives access to cash, which companies didn't have before. And on the other side, the administration's locking in the DOJ, yeah. getting, getting folks into the seats at the SEC. How do you see changes in the regulatory regime impacting M&A this next year? So that's a bit to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, if Again, the same th uh, kind of last three year look, if you look at while they've been blockbuster years for M&A, you've also seen a very large number each year, anywhere from 600 to 800 billion of deals not going through. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, uncertainty, not knowing whether this deal will close or not, is not a good thing for M&A at all. Mm -hmm. And so part of the question has been, what will be the approach that the current regime takes and one of the reasons we don't have the answer to that, um, despite being kind of one year into this uh, administration, is not all the seats of the DOJ and the FTC were filled, mm -hmm. but now they are. So we are all closely watching it to see what would be the approach they take mm -hmm. and what would be kind of the cadence of deals getting approved, not approved. But that, if, if you look at all the ingredients that you need for M&A, the missing part has been having certainty around the regulatory environment yeah. and a board being able to say, okay, we are announcing this deal and I have clarity into this will close. I may have to do some divestitures, but this is what it is. That clarity has been missing in yeah. some sectors mm -hmm. more than the other and having that would be very helpful. Well, everyone that comes through, I always ask uh, to share a leadership lesson. So I'd yeah. love to hear uh, you. A Had leadership an amazing, lesson. <laughs> amazing, amazing career at, uh, at uh, J.P. Morgan and, uh, and time in New York. And what have, what have you uh, seen? I guess at different at different parts uh, of my career, maybe maybe different uh, different things. Is one uh, uh, maybe I'll mention a couple of them. One thing uh, in terms of different parts of your career being different things is sometimes you think about it as there is a person who has. Um, the title and they are the one mm -hmm. on whom the responsibility of leadership resides. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at least what we aim for and uh, I aim for is to have a culture where everyone has the ability to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Because if leadership is contained at the top and disseminates from there, that's a different culture with one person's vision and everyone else being followers to having every person being a leader in whatever way it is that they can make an impact. Yeah, yeah. Because every person can, right? We hire the best and the brightest of people, and then what is the point having the best and the brightest of talent if everyone can't come up with an idea or come up with a new, better way to do things or a new deal that we should be uh, thinking about yeah. or a, a cross-sector idea or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So leadership is not confined to particular roles. I'd yeah. say that was That's probably great. Uh, one of them, and I think the second is, um, which I found to be very personally fulfilling, uh, is, is when you see uh, a person become the best version of themselves, right? Because a large part of managing a team, I think, is to allow each person to be successful. And what each person requires is not the same, it's very different for each person. Mm -hmm. But when you see them kind of hit their stride mm -hmm. and become the best version of themselves, mm -hmm. that's a high. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fun. That's great, <laughs> that's great. Well, Anu, thanks so much for joining us today at Vanderbilt. Thank you, it was my pleasure, and good to see you again.